This exercise is so quick, I'm gonna to have to walk through it a little bit slower. Uh, we simply back in, get out of the car, take the, the plug out of the charger, plug it into the car, walk away. And that is as simple as EV charging can be. Now at this point, there's a lot going on in the background. What happens is the charger now will talk to the car. It will ask it who you are. And the car has already supplied its details to uh, Fastnet. So at this point, the charger will say, oh, I remember you. I also remember your payment details. So the charger then goes, okay, let's start charging. I literally pull in, plug in, walk away. And that, is how easy EV charging should be for everyone. Now, I made a video recently about Electroverse, and a few of the viewers actually got the wrong end of the stick. They thought I was promoting uh, the Electroverse for the price. <clears throat> Nothing could be further from the truth. I charged up at uh, Osprey, which is 79p, and Instavolt, which is 79p, and both of those, uh, plus Shell Recharge, are supported by the Electroverse. And the thought that I would promote Shell Recharge, uh, Osprey, and Instavolt is absolutely ludicrous. So anyone who thought that from the video, I apologise. You've totally missed the point of the video. The video was intended to show how easy it can be to charge at Shell Recharge or Osprey or Instavolt chargers with just one card, which is not a payment card. Several viewers say, I don't have a contactless payment card. Get an Electroverse card. With one card, that's all I need. That session, I use one card, the charger goes, oh, I know you. And I also know you don't want to pay for this session here and now, so I will send that bill to your home account for your electricity, which in my case has to be Octopus, because Octopus is the one that operates the Electroverse card. So anyone can get an Electroverse card. You don't have to have an Octopus account, but if you want to send your bill to your home account, you do have to have an Octopus account. That is how simple it, it could be. I could go to a Osprey charger, could use my Electroverse card. The bill gets sent to my home account. Really simple, one card. And one thing that I don't think I pointed out with enough emphasis, if I did actually mention it, is that here there's a 40 pound pre-authorization card charge if I use contactless. Osprey also has a 40 or 60 pound pre-authorization charge if I use contactless. If I use auto charge, there's nothing. If I use Electroverse, there's nothing. So there's no pre-authorization with these instant methods. But what we're trying to do with this video is just show viewers how quick, simple, and easy EV charging could be if only some of the EV chargers, the CPOs and the manufacturers took EV charging seriously. Why do we need to make this video? Well, it doesn't always go this smoothly, I can tell you. We have come across so many instances where it's the exact opposite, and several of the occasions we haven't even been able to make a charge. We had to drive away without charging. Well, thank you, BP. You've just taken five pound out of my bank account, and you're not letting me charge. Nope, that one's failed as well. So the reality is, for many people, they go to a charging location. They're not even able to charge their EV. Yet it could be that everyone just goes, plugs in, walks away and gets a charge. Why the difference? Although I've been doing this for years, I've been charging this car for years, and I've tried virtually all the charges of different CPOs over the years, pretty experience. I still come across problems. At the NEC recently, it was very difficult to get a charge started. I had to use their app. The contactless, for some reason, failed to work. I had to load their app. Uh, that failed, and I then had to preload the app with some money. So I ended up 
in front of the charger transferring money from my bank account into my app so that I could charge. And once it was charged, I only transferred a fiver, but once it was charged, it seemed to accept my contactless payment that I tried to load earlier. And it allowed me to put in far more than the fiver I'd preloaded. It was a really unusual experience, but it took several attempts my car locked out in the meantime because it wasn't charging. I had to restart it. It was an absolute nightmare. And I've got a lot of experience. So for me to come across this, I dread to think what someone who is new to EVs, who's just, for example, got their first EV and has that situation, it must be a nightmare to them. And this is the whole point of this video is to say that should not happen. You should be able to go to any charger anywhere in the UK and have a really simple, easy and quick charging session without any problems. At another session, I deliberately did things in the wrong way. The charger instructions said, plug your car in, then select the charger, then use your contactless card. So me being me, I thought, well, if someone doesn't read that, what happens? So I did it the opposite, the opposite way around. I put my card in first, waited for it to accept it, then plugged it in. And it took a few extra seconds, but hey, presto, sooner or later it started working. So that's one bit of reassurance that if you are a total beginner and you fail to read the instructions, you just do it your own way, you'll probably still get a charge on that particular session. But at the NEC, that was definitely not the case. At the NEC, I was supposed to be able to use contactless. It refused to allow that. At the NEC, I was supposed to be able to use the app. It refused that. It forced me to preload the app with money, which it shouldn't do. The law says it has to accept contactless. So it was not only a bad experience for me, it was in my opinion against the law. But this is what we're trying to, trying to get across to our viewers. Let's make the charging experience easy. The government's done a huge amount with the number of chargers being installed. What we have to do now is first of all, make them really easy to use. And then once people are happy with them and confident with them, then we'll tackle the price because most of them are seriously overpriced. It is perfectly clear that Tesla and Fastnet have solved this problem. With Fastnet, you can just drive in. Once you've registered with the app and set up auto charge once, you can use it ad infinitum both here and throughout Europe. It's really simple. With Tesla, once you've registered with the Tesla app, you can use it here and throughout the whole world. So they've got a one-off registration system that uh, recognizes everything. And from then on, they're ever after, will do it all automatically for you. It's a possibility they could even go one step further. Wouldn't it be nice if they had an automatic number plate recognition camera at the supercharger? So when you pull in, it goes, oh, Dave's coming in to charge. And one of the chargers lights up and says, Dave, charge here. And I pull in and everything's, yeah, uh, we could take it further. Electroverse has gone down another way, and that is to use a card to do it, an RFID card. And that works with multiple CPOs, multiple charger networks. Uh, and that might be a good way of doing it. Uh, they certainly have different technologies that they can actually transfer the cost of a charging session to my home domestic electricity account. That's fantastic. So there's a lot out there. And what we need is a little bit of grown-up thinking now. We need the Teslas and the Fastneds and the Electroverse to all get together and say, let's come up with one system, just one, that we're going to use everywhere in the whole world and every single EV in the whole world is going to use. It's not fantasy. Don't forget, every single car made in China 
will have, if it's for the domestic market, uh, for the export market, will have CCS2. That's already a standard. So Tesla cars will have the ability to go from China to wherever they drive to and charge anywhere else in the world. So this is starting. We just need a little bit more of the grown-up thinking to make this universal. It will make our life so much easier that wherever you go, you just literally pull into a charging station, you plug your car in, you walk away, you come back, you unplug it and you set off driving. That's where we want to be. And once we get there, then we can start look at the price because we will then start choosing, if they're all just as simple to use, we will then just start saying, well, that one over there is 70p, that one's 30p, I'm gonna use that one. They're just as easy, just as simple. So you will then start choosing purely on price. And then we'll get this lovely price war going where the price will start coming down. That's where we're heading. So let's go and do a bit more experimenting. The regular viewers will know from my videos that what I'm going to tell you now is not conspiracy theory because these videos have been up for ages. But it seems to be a bit of a trend that when the oil giants get involved, we have the most trouble. We have BP Pulse at uh, the NEC. But also, it's easy for some of the supermarkets to just go to the oil giants and say, oh, chuck a couple of chargers in my car park. Oh, and run them for me. And they don't care the price or whatever as does a classic example of this where they actually went to BP Pulse and said just do all the charges in my car park so I can tick the green box and get a few brownie points and then gradually or quite quickly actually over time they just fell apart and stopped working till eventually they just took them all out it wasn't worth repairing them but they ticked the box and they'd got the brownie points. So in some cases, the supermarkets just take the easy option out, get a box ticked and they move on. No real interest in it. Yet other people like Fastnet or Tesla or uh, Ionity or Osprey, they, they take a real active interest in trying to make a better experience for the EV drivers.